If you know, you know. If you don't, that's fine. Um, but we just wanted to address something that's happening at the minute. Yep. This past weekend, uh, there's been a couple of clips going around uh, from when we did a session on the Flagrant podcast um, while we were on our US tour. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there were a few jokes made um, that were incredibly inappropriate. One, speci <laughs> Bro, incredibly. one specifically pertaining to black women. Yep. Friends and family. We are here today to pay our final respects to the Sh and Gigs podcast. I'm just kidding, y'all. I don't think I could cancel these men. Um, I am a cult baby or was a cult baby. But for me to come off of their tour when I paid tickets to go see these men and then come to this was just baffling for me. So for those of you guys who don't know, James and Fuhad, they are two podcasters from the UK. They're not necessarily a part of the manosphere. At least I wouldn't think they are. Um, but they do talk a lot about relationships, but they talk about it in such a relatable way. But now there are these viral clips going around uh, about when they went on the Andrew Schultz podcast, who, by the way, is a comedian. I don't know if people know that. Um, and then they went on something no more. I forget the name of the podcast with the women. And I'm not familiar with them, uh, but the rumors have it that they don't like black women. And I'm here to say, let's break this down. OK, and I'm not breaking it down from an opinionated standpoint. I'm just going to break it down from a psychological standpoint. Is it OK for black men not to date black women or not like black women? Not to date. That's OK. Not to like another story. Now, I think the message is getting so intertwined here because we're talking about James and Fuhad not liking black women and pairing that with dating black women. Just because someone comes from a culture doesn't mean they have to be attracted to that. Now, a lot of people will say, well, this is self-hate. This is self-hate. That's not necessarily true. Sometimes the people that you surround yourself with, because we have a subset of cultures as well, might not be the thing that aligns with your values. Now, we're going to get to Andrew Schultz and what was said. But first, let's listen to what was said on the, I think it's Something No More podcast. And let's listen. Alana. I've seen the least bodies so far. Oh, yeah. thank God we ain't from here. I'm a Texas girl. You ain't offending me, none. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? Uh, thank you. See. We still got a couple days. Maybe we'll find out. But yeah, yeah. I, I've seen like two or three. Hey, but what is y'all type though? Bad is the type. But facts. <laughs> so what makes the girl bad? It varies. Though. It matters how you own it. Uh, it can be a like a skinny girl who wears the. Being a skinny girl, mm. and, just, and then you got a thick thing who just owns the shower. Being a thick thing, mm. it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. That's a PR answer. A PR answer. Hey. They're all beautiful. If you have, I'm not I... saying everyone's beautiful. I just told you Atlanta's okay. clap. <laughs> I never said everyone's beautiful. I just said I'm not seeing anybody here. You know what's funny That's about crazy. Atlanta though? Atlanta has a lot of transplants, so a lot of the people that live here, yeah. like you, rarely run into people when you're out and stuff that are from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Like the real Atlanta people, they be in the trenches, like off oh. of Cascade. We about to get jumped next time. We go no, out to Cleveland Ave. That's what they be. <laughs> what? We live here, man. I don't go to Cleveland. Now, for them to say that women in Atlanta are clapped, I don't know, y'all. A part of me does realize that these men, though they're podcasters, if you know anything about their platform and how they present online, they are very much characters, right? So they will dramatize anything. So for him, it's like good content. I'm going to say these women are clapped, right? But it's so far to extend to say like, they don't like black women just because they don't find these women in Atlanta or whatever physically attractive. And I can only say that because, again, I was a cult baby. I've watched a lot of their episodes. And I'm not talking about the clips. I'm talking about these two hour long things where my, may I waste my time watching. But they talk about the black girls that they've dated. Now, we do have to also understand that because a person is black, doesn't mean they share the same culture either, which is why I say subsets, right? Because you go to a black person in Nigeria, they ain't the same black person in Jamaica. They also aren't the same black person in Atlanta, and they definitely aren't the same black person in the UK. Now, if y'all want to cancel me for saying that, go ahead. But it's just important to note that just because they might not like American black women, and they didn't even say that, it doesn't mean they don't like black women in general. But... I do understand what happened on Andrew Schultz, so we're going to get to that. With this whole ordeal where, you know, I think one of the women said, well, what kind of girl do you like? And he said, I just, I like vibes. I think it's okay to say that. And I don't know why we're demonizing someone to say that, because are we forgetting that there are sapiosexuals out there? There are sapiosexuals out there. And for those of you who don't know, sapiosexual is a person that is, uh, sometimes they're not really attracted to physical physicalities, 
but the mind, right? And so we have used such vernacular that skews like regular text that you can find in the Webster dictionary. The mind might be vibes, right? We can equate it to vibes, energy, right? How you come off the conversation. And I think that's okay for them to say. Again, I'm not here to back them, but just breaking it down from an objective standpoint as much as I can, um, just because I know I can have some bias because these my boys, watching them get roasted, I'm so sad, okay? <laughs> I'm so genuinely sad. But just understanding that this can happen. Now, they also went on Andrew Show's podcast. And now this is where the uproar started to go. I mean, people are fling off them, them computer and just going like, what? Because this happened. So let's watch this part here. What is the black girlfriend effect? This oh, is you, know, you just glow up the other culture. Yeah, so you'll see a, a, a guy who's had a black girlfriend, all of a sudden he's got buzz cut, like, yeah. clean shape up. Nah, nah, yeah. 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 I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. shave their hair because they start losing it. Because it's so stressed <laughs> being around this black girl complaining about shit all <laughs> That's why they gotta shave their nah, hair. Nah, bro. White guys with black girlfriends, they, they, they grow step, a beard because there's up. more cushion when they get slapped. The <laughs> 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 I think, I think the black girlfriend effect. Hmm. It might be a protective instinct, bro. You think? Protective. Yeah. Do you guys? Do you guys? Have you ever had black girlfriends? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you, have you ever had white girls? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. What's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> We love them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. really? We love them all. Yeah. That means white. Who gets here? That means white. Hey, let me do no. the UL translation. Kendrick <laughs> fans, get him! <laughs> we love them hey, all. That's, yeah, that's royal cool. English. For so first I want to say, Andrew is not getting canceled. Because he's been, people done, 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 for, forgot about him a long time ago. Forgot as in like they pay him no mind because they know who he is. Some people label him as a, a racist. Y'all see how I just got up? I feel like I'm about to say something. Right? Some people label him as a racist. Some people just see him as like who he is. But I, I feel like we forget that this man has a platform, but he's also a comedian. And if you guys go to a comedy show, and I understand the podcast is not a comedy show, however, Listen to him. You can't. This man is so unserious. Okay. And so when you know comedians, they take things and uh, they amplify it. And sometimes it's true. Sometimes it's not. For Andrew, it's probably true. Like he's probably a racist. And I'm not here to judge him, but just based on the things that have happened. But at the same time, he is still a comedian. Right. And so some of the things that he's saying, it's hard for James and Fuha to sit there. And I think in the apology, which I'll show you in a second, um, James is like, you know, fight or flight is real. And it is. All right. And so the thing is, fight or flight, we always forget the freeze and fawn. When I was watching this whole segment with Andrew and, and them boys, there was a fawn response. Fawn basically means that you're not necessarily freezing, but your nervous system has no idea what to do. And so it's trying to decrease the threat with appeasing whatever's happening in the environment. And actually it happens all the time. And y'all just don't understand you do it. You ever been into an awkward situation, you just start laughing like, oh, this is awkward. <laughs> it can happen. And I will say it probably did happen to them. Now, this is not negating the fact that they probably haven't had situations where they had to stand up for a black woman or a black woman, right? But I, what I'm saying is you can be so uncomfortable especially in an environment that's not your own. Cause y'all remember these men are not from here. They literally reside in a whole nother country where racism looks completely different than what it looks like here. The only issue is their manager should have probably researched Andrew Schultz. Don't know if they did. I know they did say like, oh, they thought it was just gonna have a boys chat. So I don't know how much these men really sat and was like, oh, who's this guy or whatever, whatever. But they came into this, maybe not even knowing, knowing how much of race is a big thing. My, my good best friend, she went to the UK to do studies and she said oh, the way in which racism and the way in which people act and the banter they have is so different than the States, right? So this could have been okay in the UK. And I'm saying, I'm not saying it would have been, but it would have been their norm. Whereas this banter now in the US, the States, it's not okay. And so I'm offering them grace to say, all right, this is not their normal. And so them now looking back, they're probably like, yeah, we messed up. But that's because in the moment, your central nervous system really does shut down when it has no idea what to do. And so y'all might think, and I'm not them, but a possibility, y'all might think like, oh, they over here kikiing. If I'm taking their apology for what it is, they were fawning. 
If y'all don't believe me, go look it up, okay? I am a... Hey, y'all, I'm a therapist, a licensed therapist at that. And hey, y'all, I'm actually certified in helping with trauma and stressors. And so I can say this with confidence that when we get into uncomfortable situations, sometimes we pull away and some of us just laugh. And that could have been happening here. So the problem with entertainers is these boys, these men, be respectful and put some respect on all of their names because they're all men. These men are entertainers. And so they're going into this situation probably thinking like, all right, we're, about to, we're going to sit with Andrew Schultz. It's probably going to great, be great for PR. It's going to put our name even further on the map because these boys are really big in the UK, right? Here, probably not so much, but they're getting there. The problem is when you enter into the arena as a, an entertainer, people have eyes on you all the time. And so it means you have to be a little bit more hyper vigilant hypersensitive. You have to be aware of what you're saying because people are listening and waiting for your downfall. Even this platform where I'm talking to you right here. The only difference is I'm okay. All right. Cancel me for what I'm saying, but the science don't ever lie. Okay. So they might have gone into this thinking like, oh, this is such a, a big move for us. And the problem with that is they don't realize what they look like. I watched it. I watched the whole thing, and I'm like, y'all was just y'all kept getting set up by Andrew and his team or whatever because you didn't know what she was walking into. And when you want a man of a man of color, men of color, you want something so bad, you're gonna do what you need to do to get it because it's gonna give you bread. And for them, this was a money grab. Unfortunately, it's probably losing them some money because I'm so sure the amount of women, because it's mostly women that follow them, even though they're talking about men a lot in their pot, and I want to say mad a lot of times, it's just conversations about men. They're probably unsubscribing. They're taking you off their podcast list because of the things that have been said. But they wanted a seat at this table with Andrew and the big boys so bad that it also wasn't in their um, their forefront to think like, oh, wait, am I really registering what this man is saying? I'm also going to bet to say that they probably haven't been, in, they haven't encountered things like this a lot because again, culturally, it's just not as prevalent. I'm not saying racism doesn't occur there because it does. It's just not in the way in which it happens here. In the States, and y'all, I'm in the States right now, all right? The sad thing is, this whole black girlfriend effect, what was meant for good, right? Because I'm so sure they brought it up for a good reason. Because I want to say, it was our fool hat who was like, yeah, them mind them level up, right? Or maybe it was James, because that sounds like what James would say. Um, he's basically saying, you know, black women empower people. But then you see how the whole 180 happened and it, it just smacked them right in the face. And it makes me so sad because I'm like, did anybody not realize like, oh, he was saying like, no, the glow up effect, the black woman effect, it gives you a glow up, which means glow up means betterment, right? So at the end of the day, they might have been trying to say black women better you. But if y'all are so clouded by what everybody else is saying, you're probably missing that point. And then them laughing, that's why I said, oh, this might be a fun response because the initiation of the conversation, y'all let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. I'm okay with accountability. Um, y'all let me know. But the initiation of the conversation was something meant for good. So I don't know how many of you guys know, but James, the um, light-skinned, fair-skinned one, his mother is actually Trinidadian, right? I've never seen a picture of her, so I don't know if she's a white Trinidadian, black Trinidadian, Asian Trinidadian, but I'm assuming she's black because I think his father is Irish, something of the sorts. I promise you this wasn't on the forefront of his mind because if they, if he said something, if they had said something even more specifically about Trinidadian women or your mother... You know, your mother, um, they're bracing for your mother for to make the cushion uh, sweeter or what do you call it, um, more comfortable for when you get smacked. He probably would have had a different response. But again, emotionally, that side of their brain was not there. It was just logic, logic, logic. Like, okay, we got to fit in. We have to fit this. I'm not, I guess, pander in a sense so that we can be accepted because we're thinking about this bread. I... And when I say I'm a cult baby, I remember these episodes where they're talking about their come up and how they're doing whatever they can, which is a sad part. Um, they're not selling their souls. They didn't really allude to that, but they're doing whatever they can to get into the spaces they need to because they don't want to go back to the lifestyle they used to have. Now, this is not an excuse, but they did say it. So yeah, I don't think they're thinking about, hey, we're going into this podcast to protect black women. 
I think it was like, hey, we're going to this podcast because we know it's going to elevate our pockets. And that's a sad thing. I think we actually held them too high of a regard. And that's the thing with entertainers. We, ha- we hold them too highly. But they're social figures, right? We hold them so high that they we think they can do no wrong. But they are human at the end of the day. And I think that's why I offer them so much grace. And I offer people so much grace because... It has to be a lot of pressure to put yourself into this position. And there is this argument where it's just like, well, then don't be an entertainer. That's crazy. Because if you wanted to better your life and you knew that you didn't want to keep working at a hotel, which is what Fufu was doing, Fufu had, um, or working at these places, but you know you had a talent to speak and people would be entertained, why would you not be an entertainer? You know what it comes with, yes. But also, just because you're an entertainer doesn't mean you can't make mistakes. Because at the end of the day, you are actually a human first. And that's what I'm here to say. Y'all are human. They are human. Goodness gracious. If I haven't already, here's the apology. If you know, you know. If you don't, that's fine. Um, But we just wanted to address something that's happening at the minute. This past weekend, uh, there's been a couple of clips going around uh, from when we did a session on the Flagrant podcast. Um, while we were on our US tour. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, there were a few jokes made um, that were incredibly inappropriate. One, incredibly. Speci- <laughs> bro, incredibly. one specifically pertaining to black women. Yep. Um, and in the clip, um, Andrew was making a joke. Uh, I'm not even going to get into specifics. Mm-hmm. Making a, a, like, frankly, like racist joke. Yeah. And we were laughing at it. Mm-hmm. And to give there's there's first of all before we get into like specifics or anything like that obviously there's just literally no excuse there is no excuse agreed um and fight or flight is a real thing like it is yeah fight or flight is a real thing and it's so not easy to say but it, when you're in those situations you you look at it through a lens of like bro if it was me i promise you i'll stand up i'll kick them cameras down yeah. i'll smack homeboy in the face yeah i'll say this i'll do that but when you're in there you're in shock you're in shock and all you want to do is move on yeah all, all, bro move on all- word bro all like, you want to do is move on just move on to the next thing yeah. just move on to the next thing there's so and like many we had times. to say a few times bro just move on just move just on, move on. so many different topics you were like move on move on move on and yeah we, it's not even like about pity laughs or anything but we just wanted to get, get out of that situation get out of, literally get out of that situation keep the ball rolling and we thought it was going to be more of like a a bros chat, yeah it, just it, so it ended idiot. up being something that ended up being be. something that's like really really hurt people that yeah. look to us for support and look mm. to us to feel protected and protected is the main thing yeah. that I wanted to discuss is that it is our duty to protect you guys Facts. Um, and it is definitely not cool to be in that situation and again not be the ones to stand up and kick the cameras down and it on that occasion we did. it's not going to happen again and it's about being human. It's about mm. realizing that you don't know what you're prepared for. You don't know how to prepare for something, something you don't know that you about. don't know yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. And once it's happened one time, you're like, all right. You learn from your mistakes. Um, and that's literally, you that's learn, literally, you literally bro. learn from your mistakes. Yeah, and we're like, we're sorry. You, and you, definitely, you definitely do apologize. It's, for me, like, it's one of them ones where you, you don't realize that, like, for one, when you're part of a community, you don't realize that you can hurt your own community. Mm, especially when, so when, bad. when you're not, yeah, when, yeah. when unintentionally. Unintentionally, for real. And yeah. also on, on top of that, it was so crazy that like the narrative that's been spun about how we feel about our community, mm. the irony of the fact that whilst the whole reason we're in that country was to just show how much we love we, our community yeah. and show how much we love our supporters and yeah. how much time we spent at the shows and just like getting to know people Mm -hmm. and just like understanding our community better and just like making friends and making bonds and showing love and they're showing love. And this whole six week trip was just about showing how much we love our community and how much our community show up, show out for us. And then (sighs) to have that exact same trip be the reason that we're having to to have this conversation now. Um, But at the end of the day, um, Mistakes make you a better person. Mistakes do make you're you not a better born person. A per- you're not born yeah. a perfect person. Um, and yeah, we don't condone. We don't appease that behavior. Mm. We don't rate it. Um, and we don't want you guys to think that we were sat in that room rating what's going on. We hold our hands up. We apologize. Um, you learn from your mistakes. And we hope we don't let our community down again because ultimately we, we do this for you guys. Like, yeah, you guys day. are all you we guys, have, man. You guys are literally all we have. You guys have taken us to this, to this level and we don't want to let you guys down going forward and anymore so so what do y'all think am i wrong i'm not defending them but am i wrong scientifically let me know 
were they not fawning? Because they weren't freezing, because they did something. Were they not fawning on Andrew Schultz? Was the apology uh, sincere? I know Jane Fuhad was looking away a lot. Um, a lot of people say that looking away can be a sign of guilt. But actually, sometimes we look away when we feel shame. Guilt and shame are two different things. We, when we feel embarrassed. And it could be something like, I'm really embarrassed this is even happening. Right? But it doesn't excuse your apology. This is a very uncomfortable situation to talk about. And then to know that you have to issue a public apology because of something you not do, as in you did not stand up for the black woman, that can be very un un uncomfortable itself because as a man, most times people see themselves as protectors. And this man might, these men might feel like, okay, we didn't do our duty, but that's not what they came in there thinking they would have to do. I've seen them on many other podcasts before. And because some of the podcasts that they've been on, especially Shambuti, they had more of a mature tone um, because they knew what they were walking into. It didn't, they didn't really laugh or um, have like the jokes and, and stuff. But when they go onto these other podcasts that are more, a little bit more lighthearted, they are more of themselves. It was actually very uncomfortable to watch them on Shambuti, Shambudra, I think that's what she goes by now. Um, but when they are on these other podcasts, they are showing up and representing as themselves the same comical beings. So am I wrong to say maybe we are viewing this a little too harshly? Um, or maybe we're not viewing it harsh enough. Y'all let me know in the comments below. All right, y'all. This was a bonus for y'all because I was like, man, I will come on here and, and speak on James and Fuha because I just spent my good hard-earned money to see these people in New York. Anyway, walk a good, keep the vibes as high as you can. And click this video right here before you go. Okay, bye.